I already made a video on this in 2020. However, I wanted to update that video as I did not have a microphone at the time, so I just kind of wrote everything on text on the screen and also used video pad to edit. However, not only just that, but I also want to just make another video on the game, Spy vs. Spy. Especially because this game's like an underrated masterpiece. So without further ado, since I have made video about the game, I don't think I need to introduce it again. I'm Muffy, and let's get into the review of... Spy vs. Spy is a mad comic strip created by Antonio back in 1961. It's about two identical spies, one dressed in black, the other dressed in white, fighting each other in various complicated ways using traps. Each comic featured one of Spy's wedding, and each often take turns to be each other. Usually it's to make sure their wins are balanced so no other, despite any, what anyone tells you, no other spy actually wins more than the other. The game is also inspired by this, featuring the two spies battling each other with various traps. All Spy vs. Spy games are more or less remakes and ports of this 1984 Released for the Commodore 64. This game was ported and remade so many times, and the success of it, doing pretty much all Spy vs. Spy games just be this. Or this game in some way. Basically, you play as a white spy. Thankfully, the Game Boy remake allows you to pick which spy you want to play as. Though I'm not a fan that they managed to fuck up our spy's hat in an attempt to collect all the secret items before the rival spy does and escapes. Now, what really got this game so popular so successful was, in fact, the way you would have to go about collecting the secret items. Now, you, what you have to do is search more throughout, you have to search through furniture and different rooms to try to find the secret items. You, that's pretty much all you do. Now, depending on the difficulty, there will be more and more rooms and even more floors. And another thing you can do is set traps. You can set different kinds of traps. There are like a punchy one. And one that you set on doors, and one that just kind of flings you. And probably yeah, the other I'm forgetting about. But I'll probably show them off in the footage that capture for this portion. The unfortunate thing about when you set a trap though, is that your spy will laugh his ass off. So the other player might notice you're setting a trap if you're playing multiplayer. Yes, it does have multiplayer. One P is white spy, two player is black spy. It is also is set true for the 2005 release. Now you're not doomed just because another spy sets a trap or you set a trap. You can find items like an umbrella or a wrench, but then you can use the counter, counter the other traps. For example, obsolete umbrella is used for the traps set on the doors. The Game Boy Remake removed 
the feature. This feature that I thought was really funny, but in the virtual game, if you attempted to admit to leave without all the items, the main goal, like I said, was to collect all the items and leave. And there was a door that was always marked, which you exit, it went to collect all the items. And the Game Boy Remake it will just tell you that you don't have enough items and just have a big expansion point. But in the original game, you would be thrown backwards and killed. Now, obviously this was changed because, well, this is just goofy. It can have serious repercussions if they simply didn't know if they didn't have all the items. So they changed it. Since if they die, you lose one item. And it's usually hidden back in the room you died in. You also cannot carry more than one item without the briefcase. I will be coming and touching upon the game more later. Cause it's too good. But this video is more or less focused on the 2005 release. So that's all gonna be going on into for now. But that that gives a basic understanding of how the original game worked. So now we can actually move on to the 2005 game. And it's the This game was released only on the Xbox in America and the PS2 in Europe by Vicious Cycle. So that was known to be strict when it came to the console. It reveals to allow spy for spy on the console without a story mode. Now, while the story mode was rushed on the game in order to meet the deadline, Sony has still denied it. But it did release on PS2 in Europe, so yeah, I guess. Which is good, in my opinion, or else I would have any way to play this game for, for the footage. Or even still play the game without having to buy an original Xbox. However, unfortunately, this game did not do so well. And received pretty bad ratings, so leading to the game, well, as a whole feeling. However, despite this, and this is another reason why I don't like game reviewers at all, um, I think this game is actually great. And there are re other reviews of this game you can find on YouTube that are pretty positive about this game. It considers the game to be a hidden gem, which naturally I agree with, as this is a positive review. In the game in my original review was also a positive review. This game features a four player modern in a classic mode with the before mentioned story mode. Now, the game does feature unlockables that you get there as you play story mode, but the sake of, of this video, I use codes to unlock everything. Before we get into the game, I want to mention the spy themselves. Naturally, the black spy and the white spy are playable, and black spy being 1B and white spy being 2B. You can customize them with clothes and look as you play through the story mode, though I usually don't customize them, as these clothes are also usually based on the bosses. 
Now, as I mentioned before, this is a four-player game, so there are two final playable characters. If you assume the gray spy will be playable, well, no. Nah, wrong, wrong. New characters that are just required the black and white spy, or red and blue appear instead. Blue is 3P and red is 4P. Oh, and no, you can change the order of spy colors. Oh, I know, which it, I'm not a fan of. It was also, it's also the reason why I never go back to the original Spy vs. Bad game. I don't like being forced to play as a specific spy. However, this game, in my opinion, is good enough for me to look past that. They all play pretty much the same, and I'm personally fine with the recolor spies. Though I may be biased since I wasn't entirely a fan of Grey Spy anyway. You can edit the AI's behavior in the menus, but there is something I do want to touch on when we get to the gameplay when it comes to AI's behavior. Sword mode, huh? Well, I guess I'll... Nah, I'm kidding. I'm not gonna talk about story mode. It was Russia and the Sony is a shitty company that... Was against Russia or... I don't fucking know what their idea, what their problem was, honestly. And it really reflects... As it is the worst part of the game and... I think everyone pretty much agrees it is legit the worst part of the game. If you ever want to play this game, just use sheets to have all the stages and pretty much everything and only play modern or classic mode. Modern mode. When you begin a multiplayer match, you spawn in the base, gain about right, four random items, three items that are used for combat, one item uses to set trap with in a safe room. Each spy has their own base and they're all pretty much the same. However, the layouts of the safe room change of your base changes depending on the on the map, which I think is a very neat detail. There's a cameo of the gray spy on the wall, and we'll talk about her more later. You might also notice you begin with $500. In order to buy weapons, traps, or refill ammo, you will have to purchase them from the store that is located in your base. There are three ways to earn money in this game, from attacking and killing other spies, whether it be combat, environmental traps, or whatever, finding a secret item which will net you money, bug spell will net you double money, which I will mention later on, or finding money in a safe. Now here's where the classic game kind of comes to gameplay. So in the pathways heading to the safe room, there are two obstacles. These obstacles that I only refer to as obstacles in the script, I did find out are referred to as challenges in the game. And you must overcome these challenges in order to reach the safe rooms. A trap can be placed before the challenges are even right before the safe room. 
like this one in Mansion. These challenges usually involve some sort of platforming or something you have to do. It's basically, it's not just walk to walk and avoid a couple of environmental traps and you get the save room. No, you gotta do some platform or some crazy shit to reach it. For example, as you see in the footage, you have to do some complicated electric bulls in order to uh, reach the save room. Now, the environmental traps, the environmental traps are not safe traps, because they Instead, there are traps that can be set by two switches up here right before and right after it. Meaning, giving you like two options to set them off. Usually, I use I like to set them when I'm being chased by another spy, as the AI will chase you down, depending on the settings you set them to. Also, AI really easily fall for traps. These environmental traps usually involve some sort of trap involving well you probably guess by name, but involving the environment environment around you. For example, this arrow, this one trap in the, in the mansion has like there's like a statue of a naked spy. I think it's naked anyway, with a bow and arrow. If you fall for the trap, you will be shot by the arrow of the statue. Or this trap where you'll eat burned by a fireplace or be in the environment. I feel like I don't need to know as plenty any further. Now, they are instant kills, like you will instantly die to one of these if you fall them fall for them. In fact your health drain completely if you fall when you fall for a trap, no night telling you pretty much that you are dead. However, there are ways to get around these traps. There are alternate paths you can take, usually either just a longer pathway or like some sort of platform you have to do or just a little harder to get around. Or you can buy an item from the store that will have a hologram fall for your fall for the trap instead of you. Which is funny, it allows you to still see the animation but you don't die. Forgot to mention this in my script and in the video itself. At all in the script, I totally forgot to mention this. And I think this is really important. But the animations are unique and amazing that I think they deserve a lot of praise. Each death has like a unique animation. The spies die in a pretty unique way. It's like it's really sick. Like all the effort they put into the to environmental traps, making them unique and make them have a different funny death. I think they deserve a lot of praise and a lot of games didn't really, not even some modern games go through the effort that this game did to make sure the deaths, the environmental traps were unique. I think the game deserves a lot of praise for that. The deaths are fun and they're all unique. There are no repeat traps. Uh, all like for a game that only got like 4 out of 10 reviews on that website. Again, they put more effort into a lot of things that modern games really don't. Now, now, they have always and always set up these traps. Well, I guess it depends on the setting. But they tend to set up set these traps. And you have to be super careful if they're like playing the game with just AI. But... And I feel like this thing goes for humans too, because I feel no way in hell is human players gonna go for safe rooms and not set a set of traps or anything like that. Now, when it comes to like all of this stuff, it would really bad to know all this stuff when it comes to heading to your safe rooms because uh, the Nice little challenges can act like an easy race, like a fun little race to the safe rooms. Or the traps can get catching us by and allow you to like traverse and get to the safe room first. However, the problem, which is an issue I have with the AI, is that they will never go to the safe rooms. Like, the furthest Bob will go is like to the switch right before the challenge. 
and then I'll go backwards. That's pretty much it. The AI are not coded to head into the safe rooms, like, at all. Instead, they are coded to either set up traps or just attack other players than you. This is kind of fun for the most part, but it's a little annoying when you're the only one going for the safe rooms, making the challenges somewhat really easy to overcome since you have a limited amount of tries. As you know, any other spider are not going to be you to the safe rooms. And now, I think this is because the game was rushed. It 100% was rushed and had a pretty strict, pretty strict and tight budget. So, maybe Vicious Cycle, but VC and the script and took me a bit to remember what VC was. But it's just like I probably only had time to code them setting traps and fight each other. Which is probably a little easier than having them co go try to diverge pretty pretty complicated traps if I'm being honest. Or challenges I mean. I also don't think that you have ever buy items, I think you just use what they spawn with. Now since I'm only playing with AI, I can really only talk about the uh, Save room part for the for like most of it because that's really what I have to show for this video. Um, but once you reach a save room, you can only find one item per save room, and there are like four saves in said room. Mostly a rush and a race, just because you arrive with another player and both of you just rush and race, try to find a save room, or well, try to find the item. So, it's like a race where you both are just looking through all the save room, all the saves. And like I said, only one, one secret item per save room could be found. Meaning that once you find an item, once you find an item, you're gonna have to head straight for another save room. And each save room does contain that, every, uh, its own door. This door acts as exit. That's locked from the outside, and each item that you gain, unlike in the original games, each item has a unique ability, which I th think is super cool. So, the disguise allows you to access other spy bases. It doesn't really have much point in it, all you can do is just spawn kill for a bit, but I don't think you gain health from the other sp spies bases. So I think that you can only spawn kill them like a couple of times and then like you will get killed yourself. Plus spawn kill them won't do any good. Like it's not going to prevent the other spy from getting, I mean they will prevent them but it will also prevent you because you literally have to stay in the base in order to do this. I'm not really sure what good the disguise does. But I guess just to be a little annoying. The box bag like I mentioned before. I actually didn't know, remember what it did. So in the script that we not sure yet. I think it just gives you a ton of money. Which is true. It gives you double money. You'll get a lot of money from the bug box. That's literally all it does. The box bag I mean. The next one is the gadget, which detects traps and on doors and safes, like so. Unlike in the original games and in the classic mode I will cover later, you do not need the briefcase to carry more than one out of I didn't mention briefcase the briefcase in the in when I was talking about the original game, but in in the uh, in the modern mode you don't need to break it, it does not appear. So it does make this mod a little easier since you can just go to the safe room. But at the same time, I think it's a good idea not to have the briefcase. Imagine going through a challenge and like being able to collect the cigar on the first after a lot of trouble. Avoiding traps, doing a really difficult challenge, and then beating another human player to the safe room. And then you get an item that's not the briefcase. 
all you can do is just leave it there. Or just carry it around with you and just hope, hope that the next same room is a briefcase or else you're just fine. However, if you do die with the item, much like if you die with a weapon or an item, you'll drop the secret item. And if no one grabs it after a while, it will despawn and return to the save room. And also, look at this stupid hitbox. I pre I like somewhat touched this and this accident I died. How dumb. <laughs> the controls. Well, the controls and everything. All this actually feels real good, like... Obviously, it's probably a little bit more fun if you play with human players and stuff like that. Playing with AI players are the funnest since they never go to save rooms. But it's fun when you get all the items and they kind of just chase you down. Personally, I think all the designs of the levels, all the, everything is just really unique. Like, they wouldn't have the way there's no cup and paste. It's insane how much detail and work was put into this game that got really low ratings. Now, the PS2 version actually got worse ratings, which I'm not surprised it couldn't handle some of the stuff. I didn't mention some of the stuff that the PS2 is missing, such as the bus steps and the sound effects. Uh, you can't even hear it because I don't really play the music, the sound, in the video since a lot of a lot of music gets copyrighted in this from this game. At least three of them. But with the spies and multiplayer when you walk around, they're supposed to have footsteps, which you don't see anymore. You don't see at all. Along with the sound effects that they're still walking, which is also gone as well. And not just in the PS2 version. It'd be in the. Uh, and as my version is all fine, but the controls feel real tight, like, I don't have any issue with the controls. I can a little bit, but that's just old gaming for you. Uh, the trials are great, the animations are great, the gameplay is great. Uh, again, it's probably more fun than with actual human players, but I think that they did a really great job with this game. Now, with all that said about modern mode, let's go to classic mode, which I think will be a lot shorter. But at the same time, like, I think it is, need me to mention. There's also a couple other modes, but I don't really play them at all. I just prefer modern classic mode. Feeling down on your luck, does life just kind of suck? I wish I could say no. That it sounds like you need hope. It keeps a guy fulfilled, for me it's not being killed. Oh, it's like that joy when we kidnap boys. Uh, no. Hoping for food or some loot, it's sure to- Sonic Adventure. Oi, Sonic.
Remember Spider Spada I was talking about earlier? The original games? Yeah, closet mode is that, but 3D. You have the same premise, find a secret item and escape. You got the trap and the counter trap and everything from the original games. Being boxed in a weird apartment, hotel room, but it's under the windows. A bunch of rooms for some reason. It's more decorated, which looks really nice. But instead in the original game where there's like just two dumbass spies running around looking for a secret item hidden in like a pain or in someone's desk. And sit now there's four dumbass spies running around. The briefcase returns and you need it. And the weird <coughs> timer that kills you instantly. I think in the original game there was a countdown instead of your spy's head turning blue. When you enter a room with it, and me being dumb when I originally played it, I was about five years old at this time. Uh, my dad pirated the game on on a PDA, which I used to play it on. Because I used to have a tiny little PDA where I played games on and would just like uh, draw. And there was other things that did with it. But, mostly it was just me playing games on. But, because of this, I was very confused and thought the air was getting sucked out of the room. And that's why I don't like that. Really doesn't help that the later parts of the game, and the remix, has spies turn blue. A neat detail I do want to point out though, is that the intro and I believe in the outro? Is inspired by Spy vs. Spy, like the comic are so written by the man. By the myth, the man, the legend, the Cuban himself. There are also references to the comments I also noticed, such as the iron, uh, the iron armor that the blast makes in one comic strip, and the weird little finger ledger shop thing, which is also from the comic. But this comic was animated. Uh, but I don't think that's all the references. I strongly doubt that's all the references. But I don't have my Spy vs. Spy book with me, so the really these screenshots I'm pulling is from my original video. Now, with all this said, I do like class mode, of course, but I still prefer modern mode. Introducing the next generation from Nintendo, New Super Mario World, created especially for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. It's a bit more exciting, a bit more challenging, a bit more graphic, a bit more colorful, a bit more realistic, a bit more levels, a bit more secret, a bit more enemies, a bit more friends, a bit more sound, a bit hotter, a bit cooler, a bit weird, a bit more revolutionary, a bit more Mario, a bit more of what you want. It's 16-bit, and it's yours only if you get New Super Nintendo. Now you're playing with power, super power. Thank you for watching, this was a long video I made, so you probably know that Closet Mode was a lot shorter and not as detailed as Modern Mode or even the original. I decided that, I realized that doing all the makes videos is way too long, like this video is probably going to be nearly 40 minutes. And I decided that if I don't want the videos to be too long, then maybe I should cut back on talking so much about the games. So, for Classic Mode and for the Donkey Kong 64 video I'm working on, I'm going to cut back on being detailed about everything, explaining every single mechanic. When this isn't even a review anyway, it's just me talking about a game I like, or a game I'm trying out. 
uh, but yeah, hope anyway you enjoyed it, and uh, please do try to check this uh, game out if you can. Thank you so much for watching, leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed, and see you next one, bye.